Uh, chapter 4. Chapter 4, we're moving to the tissue level. So we did the cellular level, now we're the tissue level. We have four different types of tissues. Epithelial tissues, connective tissues, muscle tissues, and nervous tissues. We will have an idea about each one of these tissues. Epithelial tissues. The epithelial tissues are the tissues that is surrounding or lining of different uh, organs. These are the surface organs, the surface tissues, the cell, the tissues that make the surface of something. Okay, and it is um, closely packed cells that put together on a basement membrane. They don't have blood vessels, and these are the epithelial tissues. This is the first one. Um, what is the function of the epithelial tissues? The important part, the epithelial tissues is there for protection, like your skin, for example. This is epithelial cells. Your mucous membrane, the lining of your esophagus, stomach, intestine, the lining inside, this is all epithelial cells. So it is there for protection and also for moving things across them. Something like diffusion, osmosis, absorption, secretion. This is all movement across. So the epithelial cells, the first function is protection and movement through it. Things are going to move through it in different ways. There are some epithelial cells that are called the glandular cells, the glandular epithelium. This is where you make glands. These glands can be exocrine and endocrine. Exo, crime, endo, crime. Crime means secretion. Endo mean, exo means out. When you secrete something out, you call it exo. Exocrine glands. Glands that secrete outside. Endocrine glands that secrete inside. These are the specialized types of cells. Epithelial cells, the epithelial cells. Epithelial cells, again, one more time. Epithelial cells are there for the surface something like your skin, something like your mucous membrane. It's on the surface, it's not inside, it's outside. Whether it's skin or mucous membrane inside. Why do we have it? For protection. Why do you have the skin? For your protection. And movement in and out. It allows things to move in and out. The third thing is glands. You put the cells together to make glands. Um, so we have different types of cells in the epithelium cells. We have different types of cells, and you can make one layer of cells or multiple layers. If you have one layer, you call it sample. Sample epithelium, which is one layer of cells, single layer. If you have more than one, you call it stratified. What stratified means? You put it in strata. What strata? Layer. Okay? So it can be simple, which is one layer. Can be stratified means different layers. Strata means layer. Stratified, you put it into multiple layers. So it can be single, it can be stratified. The top layer, it can have different shape. Okay, look at this. If the cells looks squeezed like this, you call it squamous. If it looks like a cube, you call it cuboid. If it looks like a column, you call it columnar. Are we following so far? depending on the shape of the cells on the surface. If it looks squeezed, flat, you call it squamous. This is just a translation. Squamous means flat. Translation. Cuboidal means looks like a cube. Columnar means looks like a column. So what do you call this type? Squamous, cuboidal, or columnar? Squamous. 
Is this squamous simple or stratified? Simple what? Simple squamous. Yes. And what is this? Stratified what? Great. If you remove this, and you put this. What do you call this? Is this a squamous? How many layers? One or more? So is it simple or stratified? And what's the top one? That's it. Stratified cuboidal. Okay? If this looks like a column, what do you call this? Columnar stratified. Okay, how about this? What is it? Columnar what? That's it. Yes. And stratified what? Look at the top layer. Whatever the top layer is, you call the whole thing. If the, whole, if the top layer is squamous, you call it squamous stratified. If the top layer is cuboidal, you call it cuboidal stratified. If the top layer is columnar, you call it columnar stratified. Okay? So we have simple squamous. We have simple cuboidal. And just a, a little example of that is like the glomeruli or the alveoli, your alveolus. When you, when, you, when you breathe in, you get oxygen, and you breathe out, you get rid of carbon dioxide, right? Oxygen has to move in, and carbon dioxide has to move out, right? So it moves like this, from a simple squamous, okay? So the example of simple squamous is like the glomeruli, or the air sacs, okay? This is an example of simple squamous. Simple cuboidal, this is basically for absorption. And I'm giving you like one word or something, this is your key. Simple squamous, example, air sacs and glomeruli. Simple cuboidal, what's the example? Anything that needs absorption. You're using the cuboidal, simple cuboidal. Simple columnar. This is more of secretion. Okay? Simple squamous for transport in and out. Okay, like the air sacs and the glomeruli. Simple cuboidal for absorption, like your intestine. Simple columnar is for secretion. Secretion. So this is like the uterine tube, the stomach, the intestine also will have this simple columnar. Okay. Stratified, we have stratified from each one of those, but there is a special type that's called pseudo-stratified. What pseudo means? False. What pseudo-stratified means? It means it looks like stratified, but it's not really stratified. Look at this. What was this? Simple, simple what? Columnar. Okay, look at this now. Is this simple or stratified? Looks like more than one layer, but it is one layer. This is pseudo stratified. It is actually simple, but because it's squeezed together, it gives you false impression. Look at this. This is not two layers, it's one layer. But because this squeezing this, squeezing this, pushing this, it gives you a false impression that it is stratified. It's not. It is pseudo stratified. It's one layer, but looks like. So this is pseudo stratified. And the most important example here is the, the lining of the respiratory passageway. Do you remember the respiratory passageway? Trachea, bronchi. Do you remember those? Trachea and bronchi. Yeah, the lining there is this time, okay? And the reason why it's squeezed like this, because they contain goblet cells for secretion. This is where we make our mucus. 
And the mucus is when you spit or cough something, this is produced from these cells that squeeze the cells together. So it gives you a false impression that it is stratified, it is not. So is it simple? Is it stratified? Well, it's one layer, but looks like more than one layer. So how about we call it pseudostratified? It's false stratified. And the example is important, okay? Stratified means different layers. If it is stratified squamous, this will be either keratinized, means contain keratin. What's the keratin? A keratin is a tough type of protein that makes the cells tough. Okay, something like your skin. Your skin is tough. What, what type of epithelium in your skin? Stratified squamous. Your skin is stratified squamous. But it contains a lot of keratin, and that's why it's tough. How about the inside? Is it tough? It's not tough. If you just touch a little bit hard, you will scratch it, right? It's not tough. It's not keratinized. Still squamous stratified or stratified squamous. Okay, um, the esophagus, the rectum, the vagina, this is all inside, so this is all stratified squamous, but not creatinized. What's the only thing that we need to know that's creatinized? It's your skin. Because you are dealing with a lot of mechanical traumas, so it has to be tough. How to make it tough? Put a lot of keratin inside. The keratin is a tough protein. There is one type that's called transitional epithelium, and transitional epithelium is epithelium that's transitional. Transitional means change shape. It looks like this, okay? And then when you pull it out, it will look like this. Like, example is urinary bladder. Urinary bladder is like this, right? When you store urine inside, it will stretch, 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 right? So instead of being the wall being like this, it will become smaller, right? It will become thinner. Are you imagining what I'm talking about? If it's small, okay, the wall is thick. When you stretch, put more urine, store more urine, more urine, more urine, you're stretching the wall so it will look thinner. And that's why they call it transitional. And the important example here is the bladder, urinary bladder. This is for the epithelial tissues. The second type is called connective tissues. And connective tissues are the tissues that connect. By the way, everything makes sense. It should make sense. Do not just memorize. Understand what does it mean. There is always something that you should understand. Whether it is Greek that we need to know what, what it means, don't just memorize. Or it give, it, the name give it away. It's called connective tissue. Connective, it's coming from connect. So these are the tissues that will connect things together. Connective tissue. The tissue that connect. And these tissues can be loose or dense. Loose or dense. Loose means like fluid-like. Dense, it's like solid. So it is connecting anyway. But what's the, what's the nature of the connective tissue? It is connected, I understand. But is it fluid, is it liquid, is it loose, or is it solid, okay? And the example of that is something loose like your blood. Blood is considered, basically here's the connective tissue. Anything that's not epithelial, what's the epithelial? Skin and mucous membrane, it's not. Anything that's not muscles, doesn't contract. Anything that's not nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Anything else is connective tissue, whatever it is. Okay, anything else. Uh, is, what's the blood? Uh, is it epithelial tissue? Is it covering or lining? No. Does your blood contract? Is it muscles? No. Is it part of your nervous system? What is it then? Connective tissue. How about the bone? Connective Cartilage. Connective tissue. The tissues under the skin. Connective. Anything is connective tissue. Anything else. That's not one of the three. Is that clear? You don't ha even have to memorize. Anything that's not epithelial. It's not muscles. It does not contract. And it's not part of your nervous system. Anything else is connective tissue. Fat. How about the fat? Is it epithelium? No. Is it part of the skin? No. Is it 
Does it contract? Your fat contract? Is it muscles? No. Is it part of your nervous system? What is it? Connective tissue. So anything else is connective tissue. And the connective tissue will contain some cells and matrix. Some cells and matrix. And the matrix is basically protein fibers. Protein fibers. So we have loose connective tissue, which is semi-fluid, it's jelly-like. <coughs> and, and, and generally speaking, the cells of the connective tissue, most of them are called fibroblasts. This is the one time that, you, that we can remember. Fibroblast. These are the cells that actually produce the connective tissue. Fibroblast. This is one cell that we need to remember. So loose connective tissue and solid connective tissue. Um, adipose tissues. What's adipose means? Fat. Yes. So is fat connective tissue? It is. What type of cell in the adipose tissue? Adipocyte. What's adipo means? Adipo means fat. Adipose tissue means the fat tissue. Adipocyte. What site means? Fat cells. Fat cells, yes. Exactly. So if you know that site means cell, and you know that adipose means fat, so adipocytes are the fat cells. Okay? So this is for the fat. Another type is called reticular tissue. Reticular means network. So these are the tissues that arranged in the form of network. Like in the bone marrow, like in the liver. So if you, if you have a cut section of the liver and look under the microscope, you, you'll see a lot of networks like this, which is connective tissue, and then cells. The, this connective tissue is reticular. Uh, the dense, on the other hand, that's not loose. This is something that's solid, okay? And the example of that is ligaments and tendons. This is dense connective tissue. Your ligaments and tendons. Do you know the tendons? Like, what is this muscle here? Biceps. Yeah, if you follow the biceps down, there is a tendon down here. If you feel it, it's dense, okay? This tendon that's attaching the biceps to the bone, this is called the tendon. If you squeeze this tendon, it's actually dense. So tendons and ligaments are dense, dense regular. The other type can be like cartilage, can be elastic, like the vocal cords, for example. This is elastic. Elastic means you can stretch it, stretchable, elastic. So it can be elastic as well. Cartilage is another type of connective tissue. And the cells here are called chondrocytes. What chondro means? Chondro, cartilage. So chondrocytes are? Cartilage what? Cells. What's the adipocytes? Fat cells. So cartilage. Chondrocytes. And we have different types of cartilage. Hyaline cartilage. This is one type. Elastic cartilage. Like this. This is elastic cartilage. Okay? The cartilage like here, this is hyaline cartilage. Like this is solid. The elastic cartilage is a cartilage. There is cartilage inside your ears, right? You know that? There is cartilage. This is cartilage. But you can, it's flexible, right? So this is elastic. It's elastic. You can move it around. But you cannot do that here, right? This is hyaline cartilage. Fibro cartilage is the one that's most solid one. Did you see the intervertebral discs before? Do you see your vertebral column, like in the lab or something? There is like bone, bone, and there's a disc in between, right? This is fibrocartilage. Bone is another thing that is type of connective tissue. And what, what are the bone cells? What bones means in Greek? 
asked you. And what was chondro? Cartilage. And what was adipo? Fat. And the bone is osteo. Please remember that. This is not the only time that you'll use it. You'll use it all the time. Osteo. Chondro. Adipo. Osteo means bone. Chondro means cartilage. Adipo means fat. So adipo, sight. Chondro, sight. Fibro, sight. Osteo, sight. Sight, sight. Sight means cell. We have two types of bones, compact bone and spongy bone. The compact bone is the bone that's compact, means it is solid. Spongy means the name give it away. It looks like a sponge. And the sponges obviously contain spaces in between, right? It's not solid. This is like comparing a sponge to like... Uh, Something solid like this, for example. This is compact. Okay? This is compact. This is compact. The sponge that contains uh, spaces, this is called spongy. So we have two types of bone. Usually the spongy is inside and the compact is outside. And the bone cells are called osteocytes. Okay? Blood is the next type. Blood in general is... Fluid part and cellular part. Fluid and cells, isn't it? We know that. The blood is fluid and cells. The fluid part, this is the loose connective tissue. It's a type of loose connective tissue. And the cells can be red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. You used to remember that. White blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. These are the three types of cells inside your blood. Red, white, and platelets. Okay? The next type is called the muscle tissues. So we did the epithelial, we did the connective, we did, we're doing now the muscle cell, the muscle tissues. The muscle tissues, the cell of the muscle tissues is called muscle fiber. So we got, we, we got the, the, the cells of each type of these tissues, right? If these are making fibers, they're called fibrocytes or fibroblast. If it is in the, in the bone, osteo. In the cartilage, chondro. If it is in the fat, ad, fat cells, adipo. Here you call it muscle fiber. The muscle cells are called muscle fibers. These are contractile fibers, fibers that contract. And we have three types of muscles that we need to know. Skeletal, smooth, cardiac. Skeletal, smooth, Cardiac. Skeletal means the muscle that are attached to the skeleton. The name give it away. It's called skeletal. Like this muscle, this muscle. Any muscle that attached to the skeleton. So is what is this muscle biceps here? Skeletal. It's attached to the skeleton. How about this? Skeletal. This? Skeletal. Any muscle that attached to the skeleton. Any muscle that move the skeleton. Skeletal tissues. Are these voluntary or involuntary? You can decide, I'm going to contract. I'm going to relax, right? You control it? Yes. How about the cardiac muscles? What cardiac means? Heart. Heart. Cardiac muscles. Are these muscles voluntary or involuntary? Involuntary. 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 If it is voluntary, can you stop your heart for a minute? Just stop it for a second. Can you? You, have, you, you go to sleep and it's still working, right? So it's involuntary. How about the smooth muscles? What are the smooth muscles? Any muscles that's not skeletal or in the heart, by exclusion, it's smooth. So anything, example, uh, what do you call the muscles of the urinary bladder? Is it skeletal, smooth, or cardiac? Smooth. smooth. Very simple. Is it in the heart? No. Is it attached to the skeleton? Smooth. How about the muscles of the intestine? Muscles of the reproductive system, smooth, smooth right? Any muscles in your blood vessels that make the blood vessels dilate or constrict, smooth. smooth. Is it in the heart? No. Is it attached to the skeleton? Anything else is smooth. Is the smooth are the smooth muscles voluntary or involuntary? Involuntary. In, voluntary. 
you can say that, uh, but I can urinate, I can decide to urinate. No, no, this is not the muscles around your, your bladder. These are the external muscles. The, this is skeletal muscles outside that you can open and close. This is something else. But the muscles itself inside, involuntary. It's impossible to have smooth muscles that are voluntary. So the skeletal muscles, what do we need to know about it? Number one, uh, skeletal muscles, number one, it's attached to the skeleton. One. Number two, is it voluntary or involuntary? Voluntary. It's voluntary and it is striated. Striated means in a stria, like this. Stria means like stratified. Remember stratified? Like you put it in stria. Stria means layer after layer after layer after layer. Parallel layers. This is for the skeletal cardiac muscles. Where is it? In the heart. Is it voluntary or involuntary? Involuntary. Okay, and there is one thing here that it contains something called intercalated discs. This is one thing that I want you to remember. Intercalated discs are discs like these that hold the, the, the muscle fibers together so that the whole heart contract as a unit. Intercalated disc. Just one more word. Okay, and it's also striated. So skeletal muscles, striated, heart muscles, striated, and they contain intercalated discs. Smooth muscles, smooth muscles are not striated. It's just random. There is no special arrangement. It goes like this. It's not striated like this, like skeletal muscles. It's not striated like this, like the cardiac muscles. It's random. Not striated. And is it voluntary and in? Voluntary? Involuntary. Uh, the last one here is the nervous system. And the nervous system, the cells are called, in each system, we need to know the cell. The nervous system contains two types of cells. Neurons, and these are the actual cells. The actual cells that does the job. What is the job? The job is transmit signals in between different parts of the body, right? Like in your side, your brain, inside your spinal cord. So we have neurons, these are the main cells. Neuroglia, neuroglia, these are the supportive cells. They support the neurons. They bring nutrients to the neuron. They protect the neurons. These are called the neuroglia, supportive cells. So what are the actual cells? Neurons. neurons. What are the supportive cells? Neurons. Neuroglia or neuroglia. And the neurons are like, like you see here, there's a body and there are branches coming out of it. Body membranes, we have different types of membranes. And each membrane is usually epithelial and membrane and underneath there is connective tissue. Okay. Um, the epithelial membrane, if it produces serous secretion, you call it serous membrane. If it secretes mucus secretion, you call it mucus membrane. If it is part of the skin, you call it cutaneous membrane. So this is the serous membranes that have serum. Mucus membrane produce mucus. Mucus is, is like what you spit out. This is called mucus. You secrete mucus. Cutaneous membrane is like the skin. And the next type of membrane is connective tissue membranes, like the meninges. What's a meninges? What are the meninges? Yes, this is the cover of the brain. Membranes that cover the brain, okay? Perichondrium, what's peri means? Around? Yeah, please remember this. Peri means around. Perichondrium, what's chondrium? Yes, so what's the perichondrium? Around the cartilage. What's ostium means? So what's periosteum? Around bone. Yes. And synovial membrane, this is surrounding the joints. And that's it for this chapter.